Hello and welcome. Today, we'll be talking about how to establish your search strategy for systematic review, meta-analysis, even though you're writing a case series or case report-based systematic reviews and things like that. So first and foremost, you need to understand the concept of three, the power of three. You want to define your patient population, whatever patient you're looking for. Let's say sepsis patient. So think of severe sepsis or sepsis or septic shock or whatever synonyms you can think of that patient population. Second thing is you should have an exposure group or a comparison group. If I think doing example of crystalloid and colloid, I would like to write down crystalloid or finger lactate or this or this or this. Then I use word and sepsis and crystalloid synonyms and colloid synonyms, colloid, heterostarch, whatnot. The power is you have, as far as you understand that Boolean logic as an or and and functions are very powerful on PubMed. And then today I'll give you some example. There, if you're looking for and or functions help you expand your search so you're not missing anything out. Or functions and function help you constrict it. That means you're limiting your help. If you look into, let's say, a name of John, publication with John and publication with Cindy, if you say publication with John or any variations of John, going to be a lot of articles. Say, I want articles which have John and Cindy both. Now you're restricting your articles to a very limited number when both are co-author. Same principle applies that if you look only sepsis related things, you will get a millions of articles. When say yeah, sepsis and crystalloid, you might get few hundred thousand articles. Say crystalloid and colloid, you might get few uh, dozen articles or few thousand articles. When you say I want hospital mortality as outcome too, then you're talking about only few hundred articles. So from few million articles to a few hundred thousand to a few thousand to a few hundred articles, that's your goal of getting your search done. No topic has when maybe five or 10 articles. I'm sure you'll be able to find a lot of articles with any topic you look into, but using your or and and function and not as a Boolean logic as well that you don't want some of these things will work in that fashion. So let's take an example today uh, when I share my screen and see any random example we can think of uh, which can help you uh, take in this regard. Uh, in this example, I'm just gonna type in a couple of articles, uh, which is let's say if I say sepsis, uh, or septic shock or uh, severe sepsis. Uh, once I type in, and I just, I'm not doing anything else. I'm just with my patient population. I type in these things. It gave me almost a quarter million articles, 220,888 results. There is no way humanly possible I'll be able to look at all these articles or any team for that matter. You can do multiple different things. Say, I want to restrict it by only last 10 years and see the numbers goes down drastically instead of 220, but like 90,000. You say, I only want clinical trials. I only want meta-analysis, systematic review. You can't use meta-analysis and do your meta-analysis, but it's good to know what does exist already. So I will check that too. And things like that. And now you get to 2,900 articles. But just using some filters, I was able to get from 222,000 articles to only 3,000 articles. Still, it is too much because practically you can't do these things in six months uh, or, or even a year period of time as you're looking at when I don't even know how, how much I want it to work on. So let's go to the advanced function on um, PubMed. This is a very nice field for you guys to check it out. Here, if you I type in the same thing, sepsis or septic shock or severe sepsis, right? And instead of all field, I want this topic to be actually in my abstract or my title. So I'm going to pick that one up. I'm going to say, I'm going to use this, like say, you know, I just add it. That's where your query box comes out. Sepsis in bracket title slash abstract or septic shock title and abstract or severe sepsis title and abstract. Now I want to say, you know what? I want to study, I want to find out that, remember renal lactate, what I was using or say normal saline. So I'm typing in normal saline. And I also want this thing into title abstract. Okay, this is my goal. And now I'm gonna use the word add with and. So what I'm doing is this topic, these are all on functions in the bracket and then my and functions and all synonyms into or functions as well. And then I say, you know what? I want mortality. Or hospital death or ICU death. Anything, I, this is my outcome I'm looking into for that matter. I also want this thing into title or abstract, or maybe I can extend that thing because if people are talking about sepsis and crystal colloid, most likely they'll be talking about mortality too. But sometimes people just do a review. 
review of these things. And then you can exclude those things or you could be very specific around saying, I want them to be included as well. So let's for now include them into Stratal and abstract. And if we get too few uh, results, then we can expand it to say anywhere in the text would be okay too. I'm gonna go ahead and end it, add it as well. Once you do that, uh, you would see that initial searches are listed here as well. 220,000, all this record comes in there for you, what you're doing it. Now I'm gonna hit the search button. Once I did search, it takes a few seconds. Remember, it gave me only 13 results. The reason is giving 30 because my filters are still on. So I want to take away the clinical trial part because I want case case control studies and course studies. So I'm going to take the randomized control part as well. I don't want uh, that thing to. And I say, I don't want to rescue you 10 years and you can take it away. But now see, there are 92 results. Remember, starting from 220,000 with just sepsis data, now I'm getting into a little bit of more focus approach as well. It is not ended yet. I need to go and see new insights into fluid management in patients with septic septic shock. Fluid management, I, for, I now it's giving me a couple of ideas. You know what? Probably I should use word fluid management as an R function as well because I was only using crystalloid or colloid and things like that. I'm going to read uh, an abstract or title. I'm going to read it that uh, it's it doesn't tell me what a study it is. They are saying this is a review article. They talk about convenient management, three hours. They may have used crystalloid or colloid or something as well. They have used word septic septic shock. So my study, my research is working. There's a resuscitation part, there's a fluid resuscitation part, but I don't see that they have used the word crystalloid or colloid in, the, in this regard. They've used the keyword as a crystalloid, that's why I'm picking it up in my abstract as well. So my search is functioning fine, but it's not giving my results. So this article probably, I'll not be including it later on, but that doesn't go there. That means we can look into other things. Crystalloid solutions in hospitals review of existing literature. This is the kind of article I want to write. So maybe I'll read it and see you know, this is, and see if I can look into a different synonyms. So one thing we found out, even though we're not including this article, it gives us a new search term called fluid management. I can use them into my synonym criteria as well. This article, I may be able to use it. So I counted one. Efficacy and safety of infection, injection, XYZ, sepsis negative, intravenous route. They're talking about these things. I'm not sure if I'll be using it. I go into and determine if the article fits my criteria, I will be using it. Fruit therapy for sepsis, a review, it might be a good article. It's in JAMA, so I'll review. I will include it. So that way it gives you an idea that how many articles uh, your search is working fine. You look at the first 10 articles, uh, which will be right here. You can expand it saying, I want to see more results. It can show you more results. You can limit yourself and say, you know what? I want to read next 10 from 15 to 25. That's where you can get your yield percentages by reading the article title and abstract and see if you want to be using it. You can go back and update it. You can go back and say, you know what? I'm going to have all these things. You can copy paste these, take away the filters out and go back and update new search terminologies in your OR function and AND function. Do it a couple of times. And once you have done this, you can lock in your fourth strategy or you can lock it your third or fourth one. You have to show all the work by my second strategy. I make this small changes. Third, you want to show the work which you think is practically might be your final strategy and then show the number of articles and a yield percentages. This strategy will help you refine your search terminology. This strategy will help you uh, talking about uh, what good way to include the articles in search in PubMed and then lock that search strategy after doing a couple of iterations and then deploy the same one to Scopus or anything else as well. This is a good learning point how to use the Boolean logic in advanced function, restricting your search terminologies to abstract and title first, and then expanding and going into full text versus non full text, and come back and apply filter in the end rather than putting the filter from the beginning. I hope you find this video really uh, uh, useful. If you do so, please like and subscribe to our channel. Write in the comment section what should be bringing it to you as well. We'll be very happy to hear from you. Till then, take care.